Hey everybody, this is my waterfall tank and today we're going to do a little bit of work on it. My main goal is to treat the plants for aphids again. Uh, this is pretty much a never ending battle with me, but it also forces me to do a lot of water changes on this tank. The way I've been treating for the aphids is I've been spraying the foliage with uh, soapy water. And because I'm using soapy water in such close proximity to my fish tank here, I make sure I do a really thorough water change every time I do it. I have had it suggested that I use hydrogen peroxide. I've tried that. I had limited success. Uh, I'm not really sure why I stopped doing that. I think I might go back to doing that for spot treatments or uh, occasional treatments when I don't feel like doing a water change because that is uh, safe to use when used properly. But I've gotten impatient with it before, and I've used too heavy of a concentration, and I've killed plants. Uh, I'm not worried about my fish. You'd have to use an awful lot of it to kill the fish. Um, but, you know, sensitive root tissue and, and other, you know, plant tissue can, can get uh, killed pretty easily if you use too high of a concentration of um, hydrogen peroxide, which I've done before. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set my camera up on hyperlase or whatever that is called where it records everything and then plays it back in fast motion and I'm going to show you the whole process of me draining the tank while I spray everything down uh, might get a little boring I won't blame you if you fast forward through it it depends on how quickly the uh, fast motion goes you can see right here I've got a couple of aphids just sitting right there bold as brass taunting me challenging me well, they're about to get what's coming to them. So I've tried to figure out how to set the camera up so you can see the whole tank while I do this, and I just can't. I've even tried doing it um, portrait style, and I, it just doesn't really work. You just don't get the whole thing. This is a pretty large setup. So the way I can get the video set up, we will basically see the upper portion of the tank while I'm doing all the spritzing and spraying. And then I'll take a break when the tank's pretty much at its lowest point. Uh, we can have a chat about what's been going on so far. Uh, and then I will go ahead and get the tank filling back up. And whether I record the, the filling back up part or not, I don't know. Because usually by the time I'm filling it back up, I'm done with the spraying. And I won't have to do that anymore. Boy, talk about plenty of them out and bold as brass. So definitely do to get in here and get some of this sprayed down so sit tight let me get started and uh, well actually you know what before I start I will show you my bottle of soapy water let me find it here so we know exactly what we're dealing with so that's all the water I've got in it now I may have to top it off but I probably won't use that much water the problem is it gets all sudsy and it gets hard to spray so having a nice full bottle uh, is easier to work with usually but that's about how soapy it is you can kind of gauge by how sort of sudsy that got it's not crazy soapy but you can also notice a sort of bluish tint to the water it does have a nice dish soap, dish soap in there uh, actually we might even be seeing some of that green bleeding through from behind but it does have enough enough dish soap that's hard to say uh, enough dish soap that it you know it gets sudsy so that's maybe half a teaspoon of soap in this whole bottle and that's what we're going to go ahead and get started with spraying everybody down so sit back and enjoy the show
All right, so we're down to about the bottom of the line. It's going to drain a little more while I show you what's going on here at the moment. So I don't know how well that came out on video or not, but I did use my power vac there to do a little booster water change and removed five gallons out of the tank a little faster than it would have if I was just allowing it to drain with the siphon. If you'll see, I've got a little piece of my polyfill batting in there. Uh, I have had a frog go up there before, so now whenever I'm doing a water change, I just tuck a little piece of uh, filter material in there so nobody gets sucked up and out the drain. So I'm also going to change the filter in this. You can see back there, it's actually got a little bit of that java fern sucked down into it at the moment. Uh, that's not like attached to it or anything. That's just gotten there during this water change since the water level is so low. But that gave you a pretty good idea, hopefully, uh, of how much I hose this place down when I tell you I hose this place down when I, you know, squirt it with that soapy water. So I do my best. I get in there and get everything uh, sprayed as best I possibly can. But with aphids, all you got to do is miss one single aphid. And within days, you've got hundreds or even thousands of them again. So it's a never-ending battle. I, I've, I'm not fooling myself into thinking I'll ever uh, eliminate them or eradicate them entirely. But I can get on top of them. And, you know, if I have to do this once a week... Uh, just to keep them in check to where they're not actually damaging my plants. That's fine with me. Uh, of course, I also don't want them getting around the house and getting into my other house plants and all that kind of stuff. So you can see that little guy right there. Hopefully he won't be alive too much longer. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and call that fully drained. We're going to go ahead and start finishing it off. So give me a minute, and I will do one final look after we've got the tank filled back up. And that will be uh, the after section of this video. All right, so here we are all done. You may be able to tell the water flow is much more vigorous now that I've replaced that filter. That thing gets clogged up really quickly. Uh, every couple of days, if I don't replace it, we get down to just a gentle trickle, whereas I like to see a little more vigorous flow. So that was pretty much it. That was the whole routine. While I'm letting the tank drain, I spray everything down. I will then usually use my power vac to drain a little faster just because I don't want the fish in that soapy water any longer than necessary. Uh, I didn't point it out or I forgot to point it out. I don't know if you noticed while you were looking in there uh, when the water was all the way down, but you could see little bits of suds, you know, collecting around the edge of leaves and stuff like that. And that's about the extent of it. The water doesn't get sudsy necessarily. But you do see evidence of soap on the surface, and I'm assuming that if it's in the tank, then that's more than I want in there. And so that's why I do that really big water change. And all told, it's maybe 15 minutes before I'm starting to put fresh water back in the tank. And I've done this many times now, and so far I've not noticed even a hint of issue with the fish. Nobody's ever acted unusual. I've never seen any... Uh, losses or anything. All of their color looks great. All of their behavior is normal. And so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I really wish I could get on top of the aphids. The upshot, of course, is that everything now smells spring fresh, like clean dishes. That's always a bonus for about a day afterwards. Everything smells like whatever the scent of that dishwashing liquid is. So, so far I've seen a few on here let's see what happens let's see if we can even get this one in focus oh, this one here is still alive it just moved so let's see if the tetras don't come over and get that the guppies don't seem to like the aphids when I throw them in the water very much but the skirt tetras come up and hit them pretty quickly uh, I just flicked that one off the end of my finger. I honestly don't even know if it went in the tank. Um, so we still have that one that was still alive. But keep in mind, I just did this a few minutes ago. I can't imagine that one was not uh, sprayed. But there's other places where I've seen them. And let's see if this one here, if you touch them and if they just drop off, they're dead. If they move or they start, you know, wriggling around a little bit or they stick to it, 
you can tell that they are still alive. If you just a gentlest touch, see how it just sort of came off of my finger, just sort of fell off, they're dead. So that one up there that we just saw on the tip of that leaf was the only one so far that I've seen that is still alive, and that was basically still alive. It doesn't mean it wasn't going to be dead 10 minutes from now. It was just still alive as of that moment. Uh, here's another one that looks pretty healthy in here. Let's see what he does. See, that one's crawling. You can see how when I touch it, it doesn't actually... See how it just moved? So that one is still alive. Now, I'm going to leave that one alone and try to remember to come back and check later and see if it's dead or not. So it's hard to imagine after a spraying like that, any of them survived. But we just saw two that did, at least so far. And all it takes is one, because both of those that we looked at are carrying babies or eggs or however it works. All I know is that when they're born, they're already ready to go with the next generation. They don't have to find a mate uh, or anything like that. So aphids are incredibly difficult to get rid of. So we'll keep on trying. All right, everybody, there you go. It's a final look for my waterfall tank this afternoon make sure you subscribe you don't want to miss anything i got coming up you never know what it's going to be with me and hopefully i like to think it's all good stuff so thanks again for watching this one and i'll see you real soon in the next one